Hello, Namaste. Welcome to Dave's Hammer Show. This is the weekly flagship English talk shows of ITV Nepal and Indigenous Television. In this weekly talk show, I invite guests from different walks of life, from different continents, and uh, especially from indigenous communities, or also from non-indigenous communities working on indigenous issues. On every uh, program, I uh, sometimes conduct online interviews, sometimes uh, in-person interviews, and, and discuss on various contemporary issues. Today, in today's programs, I have uh, invited very um, one of the researchers from Bangladesh, and, and uh, he did his PhD from Germany on indigenous issues. And, and as he is in Nepal, I have invited him in my program to discuss about uh, the why the um, the educational programs or academic uh, programs on indigenous issues is important. So uh, let me welcome uh, today's guest. Uh, he is none other than uh, Hari Purna Tripura. First of all, welcome to the show. Yeah, and so to start with our conversations, could you, uh, as I told you in background, about your introduction anyway, but uh, could you briefly introduce yourself and about your work and involvement with indigenous people's movement or kind of situations in Bangladesh? Thanks uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to say something on this indigenous issues. And I belong to also one indigenous community of Bangladesh named Tripura Indigenous. And I also did my research on this indigenous movement of Chirong tracks. So in Germany, so there's a little bit background about how I came to know about the issues of indigenous and I'm also doing lobby advocacy work on this on these indigenous issues internationally. All right. So um, in, in Asia, when we talk about the South Asia and indigenous people's movement or situation as such, uh, Bangladesh obviously also comes under the discussions. And uh, could you briefly tell us about the you know, recognitions of indigenous peoples in Bangladesh by the government and, and uh, a kind of situation of indigenous peoples in Bangladesh? Basically, we don't have the recognitions, constitu constitutional recognitions as indigenous people in Bangladesh. So, um, if we link the kind of recognitions uh, with the rights or human rights, then also uh, there is also the politics of the recognition of our non recognitions. But uh, if we look at this um, uh, socio-economic and political marginalization of indigenous people seen, uh, uh, since the British to pre-colonial to this uh, uh, to uh, current uh, or to uh, date, then... So, uh, one thing is the, when uh, the UN actually opened Called for the state to be to sign on the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, and in, it is Bangladesh which did not sign even this, you know, international declarations on the rights of indigenous people. That's such. But uh, you know, uh, as you already said, that the Bangladesh gov government doesn't give a legal recognition for indigenous peoples, but indigenous peoples as such are demanding to get recognitions. How do you look this? You know the indigenous peoples, their demand and international scenario? Yes, I think there is a politics. Uh, the current government um, in 2018 when there was the elections, so the current government in their election manifesto, they promise I mean, to give these who are demanding for these indigenous people as indigenous in the constitutions. But when they came into power, so they forget. So there is a politics of I mean, giving recognition of non recognitions and um, and also it relates also to the um, political willingness of these um, um, political leaders or elites of Bangladesh. Actually, how they want to see the Bangladeshi uh, either as a 
like uh, unitary nations or the uh, as a country with diverse uh, nationalities or ethnic group. So it reflects actually also the ideas of these political elites, how they want to see the Bangladesh. So when we uh, talk or religion about the indigenous peoples of Bangladesh at just and, and one of the treaty that, uh, you know, many times we hear is Chittagon hill tracks occur and, and based on which the indigenous peoples of Bangladesh actually demand their rights as, uh, as well, right? Could you tell us a little bit background about what is this Chittagong Hill Tracks all about and how this uh, occurred actually gives a kind of rights for indigenous peoples even if the government doesn't recognize? Now, okay, if we look at the history of the Chittagong uh, Hill Tracks, um, um, during the pre-British period, so it was ruled by the indigenous king or chief at that time. So there are 11 ethnic, uh, indigenous communities in that Chirong Hill Tracks. So during the British, it became the part of this uh, British Bengal. Then when the British left, it became part of the East Pakistan or the Pakistan, and then after that in uh, Bangladesh, part of the Bangladesh. So if we like, look at this uh, political de uh, development of the Chiron Hill from a long historical perspective, then we will see uh, the indigenous peoples. I mean, uh, the, during the pre British period, they are ruled by their king and they have the autonomy. So there's the gradual, I mean, this lodging of autonomy, this whole process. and. In relation to that, it's also the gradual, I mean, marginalization of these indigenous people in terms of their economy, in terms of politics, and also in terms of demography. So during the British, there are almost 100% of the population in the region are the indigenous people. Right now, we became the minority in our region. So it also reflects again. I mean, the politics of this power, who will get the power during the elections, and it reflects again also, it uh, translates as like the, their social economic marginalizations. If they don't get the power in this local government and also other institutions, so these government bodies, they provide the services and they decide the development. Indigenous people, they are excluded in this process. So, Chittagong Hill Tracks occurred actually. Uh, is based on the uh, right to autonomy of indigenous peoples, as you said. And does it cover the indigenous peoples' issues of Bangladesh in general, or only the 11 ethnic tribes that you, you mentioned? Yeah, the Chitong Hill Tracks Accord is related to the issues of Chitong Hill Tracks, but there are also other indigenous people in Bangladesh. But the uh, number of populations of these uh, indigenous people, they are, um, are around one, um, sorry, um, it's um, uh, 200, um, sorry, 800 uh, thousands. So this is almost the 50% of the Bangladeshi indigenous people. And, um, Somehow, it's also linked with this um, rights of the other indigenous peoples. Uh, and since, I mean, those who are living outside the Chitong Hill Church, they are also more marginalized than the um, uh, indigenous people of Chitong Hill Church. So, if the Chitong Hill Church Accord is properly uh, implemented and uh, um, people of Chitong Hill Tracks, uh, in indigenous people of Chitong Hill Tracks, they get their rights, then it will also might have the positive in, uh, impact for the other indigenous people in Bangladesh too. Since um, the indigenous people of Chitong Hill Tracks, they are also part of the movement of the indigenous people of Bangladesh. And also, many of them, they are also leading the indigenous movement in the Bangladesh. So, okay, uh, when we look at the uh, indigenous people's rights in, in, in international level, 
as I said in background that uh, Bangladesh government did not sign on the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. But then uh, you, uh, the Bangladesh government is party to ILO Convention number uh, 107, I guess. Not in 169, but 107, the old one, mm -hmm. that is related with indigenous peoples. You know, tribal people. Uh, tribal people, right? But that, to some extent, even though there is a criticism of uh, number 107 in relation to assimilation of indigenous peoples, and the ILO actually amended this and then uh, adopted the ILO Convention number 169, right? So having this, you know, uh, the background that the Bangladeshi government is a party to, uh, you know, ILO Convention number 107. On that basis, uh, often we hear the voice that indigenous peoples of Bangladesh are demanding Bangladeshi government to ratify ILO Convention 169. And also, uh, you know, give a recognition, legal recognitions. And could you tell us a kind of, you know, indigenous peoples demand their voice for the recognitions and, and the Bangladeshi government's, you know, uh, obligations towards the international community? We also have, I mean, to look at or to critically look at the issues. Um, sometimes I think people, are, I mean, the rights of people might be on the paper. Yes. So we have the children field tax regulations. Yes. There's also the law, a special law for yes. they're actually um, recognize I mean some extent of this um, regional autonomy and so rights of the indigenous people. Then we have the Hill District Council Act. Then we have the Chitong Field Tax um, Accord. So even if the government they recognize but the recognition and or uh, legal recognitions and also uh, to um, uh, work or uh, uh, formulation of this uh, law into policies and the practice. So that's the difference. So it's still in Bangladesh we have many laws, even in the constitution, the generals. But I mean, right now the issue is also the practice or realizations of this law. So that's the difference. So even if the government, they might uh, they are in some countries, they might have the recognition of indigenous rights and these ILO uh, conventions and other. Uh, so, but still, I mean, if it is not in practice or in, I mean, the realization, so still, I think uh, it, it will not actually change uh, the situations of the indigenous people and their demands for groups. So you did your um, PhD on the international development studies and, and, and you said me in background that you also conducted a research on the situation or issues of indigenous peoples in general or in, in focusing with the you know indigenous peoples of Bangladesh. What were your findings of the situations or struggles of indigenous peoples of Bangladesh in your research? Yeah, I did research, so basically my research is about the narrative, why actually the indigenous activists of 1960s during the Pakistan period and early Bangladesh period, they started to fight for the rights of indigenous people. So I studied their biographical background and from the, my findings, what my argument is, we have to look at, I mean, if we want to understand the issues of politics, the movement, so we have to look at the people's and the activist biography, their life experience, why actually they uh, um, enter into this kind of politics. So their biographical experience of marginalizations, their socializations with um, um, some particular political ideology and their aspiration, what kind of society they actually want. So those who are involved in this politics, so there are always, I mean, the kind of aspirations of to have equal society, free from discriminations, exploitation. So I think we have to focus more on these issues so that we can also can connect this indigenous movement with the other movement of indigenous people because we are actually fighting for the same. Right, okay. So as, as uh, you are here in Nepal for um, attending the launching of master, one of the master's programs in, in the 
uh, indigenous studies and, and you have been following some of the universities around the world are introducing the subjects on the indigenous studies and, and uh, why do you think the uh, you know academic you know the courses on indigenous studies is important yeah there um, if you want uh, actually uh, to understand the importance of that kind of studies so we have actually to also know the history of the uh, the research or the debate about the reality or the knowledge. So basically, when we look at the history of this um, research, how they define the reality, how they define the knowledge, it's basically Eurocentric, dominated by the European. And those knowledge produced on indigenous people by the anthropologists or sociologists or early colonial administrator, those are also European. So, the knowledge they actually produce us is by the outsider. So basically, then when we look at the issues of um, the knowledge, something as historically situated and place based, then definitely I think um, um, we will find, I mean, why it is important to have these indigenous studies, but it should be also by the indigenous people, I mean, the knowledge productions, not only by the outsider. Because knowledge that's related to the lived experience of the people living in a time and place. So, um, right now the question is, yeah, we can't actually opened like some kind of indigenous program but if that program actually they took the theoretical framework and, or the understanding of indigenous people they are mainly produced by the outsider from a perspective lens either it can be eurocentric or the dominant or the dominant framework so perhaps and if we don't include the knowledge or the voice of indigenous people from the inside, then perhaps it will again, I mean, it's important, but that kind of course might, I mean, the produce or reproduce the same thing. So uh, that kind, uh, that can be also like, may work as a, a system of colonialism rather than, I mean, um, um, uh, offering uh, a positive uh, impact uh, or um, sort of uh, emancipation of indigenous peoples. So, um, if we open that kind of program, so to my point of view, I think we have to value the knowledge that we have. And also, uh, there should be actually uh, the research uh, that should be done by the also uh, insiders, uh, and and we have also to critically actually engage with the theory or understanding and also literature that are produced um, or the, those are available on the indigenous people. That means that indigenous peoples themselves should have participations in the curriculum development, right? In the curriculum development, also knowledge productions, not only in the curriculum development and also in teaching. So otherwise, I think it will produce, I mean, it will even might have, I mean, the unintended negative effects than the positive one. All right. Thank you so much, Hari Purna Tripura, for your time and esteem thought that you shared about why the academic courses on the indigenous studies is important for indigenous people. Yeah, even, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Actually, talk to uh, the researcher or academia, academics, uh, Hari Purna Tripura. He comes from uh, Bangladesh and he did his PhD from Germany and uh, especially on the issues of indigenous peoples of Bangladesh. So I discussed uh, in today's program basically why the academic courses on indigenous issues uh, is important 
And uh, as we have come to the end of the program, if you have any queries or feedbacks in relation to the program, you can reach me at indigenoustelevision at gmail.com. Namaste.